Namaste children, welcome to the first language English class 8, it is a poetry class. Children, the today's poem is Palanquin Bearers, writer Srimati Sarojini Naidu. Let us do a pre-reading task which is in our textbook. Read this question. How are the dainties or the idols in the temple taken in a procession during the festivals? Yes, usually the idols are taken carried this way. This is Mysore Dasara Ambari. Yes, and some carry the dainties on the shoulder uh, that is in the Pallaki. Yes, the other side you can see they are pulling a chariot and uh, we call it as also car festival that is pulling the chariot with a thick rope and sometimes even in the pallaki they carry the dainties that is the idols of the gods and goddesses now guess who's in the car in the present days brides in india are taken in a decorated car yes you can see a bride there now how were the royal brides in the ancient days taken around? Let us see the decorated bullock carts, decorated camel cart and these, what are these? Pallaki, Palki, Palanquin and who do you think? took the privilege to escort the bride. Here palanquin bearers, they represent as guards, bodyguards, protectors, assistants, defences. So you could see here the escorts who are carrying the palanquin. Children, let us listen to a rhythm, the palanquin bearers sing while they carry the bride in the palanquin. It is borne on the shoulders of two, four or even eight bearers of unique station or class. The birthplace of the word is Sanskrit palanka, a voyaging bed. Its Pali structure is palanka in Hindi and Bangla, palki. Palki was one of the methods for troop development amid Akbar's rule a great many. It was an extravagance with respect to the pre-advanced noble and prosperous individuals to move in palanquins, which were of numerous sizes and outlines. The littlest and most grim one was called Bali, which was borne by two persons as it were. The bigger palanquins were borne by four to eight persons. The exceptionally wealthy and refined individuals used to move an expansive and brightened palanquin borne by eight bearers. In light of the issue, the Court of Directors of the East India Organization issued a request in 1758 that precluded the essayists, little representatives, from purchasing and looking after palanquins. The reality just shows that Palki was in those days what an engine auto is today. In the pre-steamer and railroad period, even the Senator General frequently thought that it was helpful to move in palanquin. In the mid-19th century, the Postal Office presented the arrangement of stage palanquin for conveying mail furthermore affirmed travelers on installment. Long separation travelers used to purchase tickets for stage palki from the mail station. The stage palki framework proceeded down to the later part of the 19th century. By the mid-19th century, the Europeans all things considered quit utilizing palanquins. Be that as it may, until the end of the 19th century, the Babas and noble locals regularly utilized palanquins as their method for transport. The palanquin utilized by Rabbi Indranath Tagore as a part of his visits to his Zaymind Arikakriyat Shaladaha still protected there at the Tagore Gadaibari. The Palki works started to originate from Bihar, Orissa. Chohanagpur and central provinces from the primary quarter of the 19th century. Numerous shoes sold their work locally as palanquin bearers. They originated from their countries amid the dry season and for the most part left their spots on the onset of the rain storm downpours. 
They had pretty much all turned spots to visit toward the end of the blustery season each year and made their interim cottages at some open or private spot. Palanquin as a method of transport started to decay from the mid-19th century when steamer and rail correspondences began and general transportation started to move forward. With the improvement of streets and expressways and expanding utilization of creature trucks and carriages the palanquin as a method for transport confronted eradication. <laughs> Fine. Now children, let's listen to now children, let's watch a video where you need to listen to the recitation and watch the uh, illustration that comes. Lightly, oh lightly we bear her along. She sways like a flower in the wind of her song. She skims like a bird on the foam of a stream. She floats like a laugh from the lips of a dream. Gaily, oh gaily, we glide and we sing. We bear her along like a pearl on a string. Softly, oh softly, we bear her along. She hangs like a star in the dew of her song. She springs like a beam on the brow of the tide. She falls like a tear from the eyes of her bride. Lightly, oh lightly, we glide and we sing. We bear her along like a pearl on a string. Yes, children, now that you have listened to the poem and watched some of the videos which supported the action for you. Now, let's go to the glossaries. Sway. Move from one side to the other. Flowers sway in the wind. Flowers sway when the wind blow. Tu gaadi su, hilna dulna. The birds skim over the top of the waves. Skim, glide smoothly over something. Jari hogu, fisalna. Here, glide. Glide is also a movement. And you can see here the girl gliding. She glided along on her skates. This also is Jari Hogu Fisalna. Foam. Look at the picture. Hope you can understand what is foam. Small bubbles. We make it in soap also. Yes. Nore Jhag. Look at the sentence. Vicky sings gaily after his result. Now, what do you mean by gaily? Happily. Ullasadinda prasannata se. The dew rested on the grass. Could you see the small dew drops? Yes, they are condensed drops of water. Ibbani os. Next, beam, ray of light. The sunbeam shines every morning. Kirana, Kiran. Bro, top of the water in this poem. There you are, top of the water. The sun's ray shone on that bro. And another bro, I bro. Yes, we have two meanings here. Nirina Melbhaga, Hubbu. And Pani Ke Upar Bo. Okay, let's watch another video. Here you need to run your eyes and read through the lines of the poem, children. Read this and let's come back. Lightly, oh lightly, we bear her along. She sways like a flower in the wind 
of her song. She skims like a bird on the foam of a stream. She floats like a laugh from the lips of a dream. Gaily, oh gaily, we glide and we sing. We bear her along like a pearl on a string. Softly, oh softly, we bear her along. She hangs like a star in the dew of her song. She springs like a beam on the brow of the tide. She falls like a tear from the eyes of her bride. Lightly, oh lightly, we glide and we sing. We bear her along like a pearl on a string. Yes, children, let's know about the poet of this poem. Here is Srimati Sarojini Naidu. She is the poet of this poem. Let's know more about her. Sarojini Naidu, 1879 to 1949. Well known as the Nightingale of India, Sarojini Naidu was also a famous English poetess. She was a political activist and played an active role in the freedom movement. She was the first woman to become the governor of an Indian state after independence. Some of her major contributions are the broken wings, the bird of time, the golden threshold. Yes, let us work out some of the textual exercises which are in the text. Pick out the words from the poem which describes the movement of the bride. Here are few of the movements of the bride. Let us read through. She sways like a flower. She skims like a bird. She floats like a laughter. She hangs like a star. She falls like a tear. She springs like a beam. Well, all are action words. Now let us do this one. Why do you think the palanquin bearers are carrying the palanquin lightly? The palanquin bearers duty is to carry the palanquin. They carry it lightly because they think that the bride inside should not be scared. What are the emotions that the bearers feel as they carry the palanquin? The palanquin bearers feel light, happy and soft as they carry the palanquin. Why is the bride compared to flower and bird? Let us see. Bride is compared to a flower and a bird because she is very light like a flower and sways and a bird that glides in the air. Explain the image in she sways like a flower. The bride's movement is like the swaying of a flower as she is very delicate, fragile and beautiful which moves in the wind. Why is the bride referred to as a pearl on a string? The bride is referred to a pearl on a string as she is very delicate and precious like a jewel. Now, why do you think the poetess has used two contradictory feelings? Laugh in the fourth line of the first stanza and tear in the second line of the third stanza. Why? Yes, here we see that the bride has mixed feelings. She is happy as she is going to start a new life with her husband and parents-in-law. So, she is happy. She has tears and is sad because she is going to leave her parents and siblings. Now, children, let us have some fun time. Let us do tongue twisters, shall we? Let us read out. Adam ate an apple. Read with me. I can't climb a crocodile. She sells seashells on the seashore. 
big brown bear bought bigger books peter piper picked a peck of pickled peppers a big black bug bit a big black dog and the big black dog bled blood well children what are these that we read they are tongue twisters why did we do they have while reading what did we do we gave stress there was stress in every word one speech sound was repeated for example if it is adam ate an apple a a a a was repeated yes repetition of consonant sound at the beginning of a word yes you have experienced what are those words alliteration they are alliteration and alliteration is a figure of speech you might have come across in your bridge course also let's just read through this one alliteration is a literary device that repeats a speech sound in a sequence of words that are close to each other alliteration typically uses consonant sound at the beginning of a word to give stress to its syllable now let's see why do we use alliteration and where do we use alliteration there are more than two words in a line for fun in the rhymes and poems when there are repetition we feel happy to repeat the sounds and it is rhythmic also to improve our pronunciation to remember the poem lines better so that is why these alliterations are used well children let's see in our poem we have many alliteration sarojini naidu has used many alliteration and let us see how these repetitions go lightly oh lightly we bear her along she sways like a flower in the wind of her song could you see the repeated sounds here yes she skims and stream sounds are repeated she floats like like laugh lips the sound l is repeated let's see here gaily o oh gaily we glide and we sing here g sound is repeated and could you see here we bear her along like a pearl on a string is there any sound repeated twice i don't think so let's move to the next line softly o oh softly sir is repeated she hangs like a star in the dew of her song sir sound is repeated those were the sounds which were repeated the consonant sound the beginning of the words were repeated and those are alliterations and alliterations give fun while we recite the poem or the rhymes now let's see here some letters are written we did this even in our um bridge course class school beginning program children what are these then very well you remember if you would remember if not also don't worry these are rhyme scheme let's see in our today's poem what is the rhyme scheme that is followed by shrimati sarojini naidu and let's find out the rhyming words here bet head and let's name them give them a letter a because this is the first word in the stanza and it is rhymed with word head bed head and they take the letter a let's see the next rhyming pair grew view they take the letter b fine let's find out the rhyming words of this poem this is robert frost poem sai i bye these are the rhyming words which rhyme together let's name them as a and the next set of rhyme hence difference let's name name them as b let's find the rhyming words from this stanza of poem run sun and only these two words rhyme together with that same sound the next fears tears ears they they are set of rhyming words which take b 
Next, sky, high, by. They take C. So here the rhyme scheme is A A B B C C B C. Fine. Let's do it with our poem. Lightly, oh lightly, we bear her along. She sways like a flower in the wind of a song. She skims like a bird on the foam of a stream. She floats like a laugh from the lip of a dream. Now, which which are the pair of rhyming words? Along, song. They take A. Stream, dream. They take B. Now, the palanquin bearers poem rhyme scheme is A A B B. Fine, children. Yes. Now, what are rhyme scheme? The rhyme scheme, the pattern of rhymes at the end of each line of the poem or song. It is usually referred to by using letters to indicate. We did it with A, B, C. Yes. Which lines rhyme? Lines designated with the same letter all rhyme with each other. Like A, A, B, B, C, C. In the same way. Fine. Let's do it here. We have already given the rhyming words underlined. Let us give the letter. The first two are A and the second two are B. So, the rhyme scheme here is followed A A B B. Fine. Find out the pair of rhyming words and then say the rhyme scheme. That is your home assignment. Now, let us take this one. The poem is full of similes. We have learned this in even in our bridge course. Why do you think the poet has used so many similes in the poem? The poem was full of action words compared with the bride and the other nouns. Let us see here. Let us recall the comparison Srimati Sarojini Naidu has spoken in this poem. Could you see here? The bride sways like a flower. Now, here the bride is compared with the action word verb sways how is she swaying like a flower that is a noun and like is the word which compares the bride and the flower with the help of the action word sway and this is the pattern one simile pattern one simile is in this way that is verb plus like plus noun let us see the next one. The bride is as light as a bird. That is why birds fly. Heavy birds do not fly. Yes. Now, as light as, as is used to compare, which we in the first pattern we used like. Here it is as. B bride is as dash as a bird. As adjective as. Light is an adjective. A bird is a noun. Bride is compared to a, a bird with the help of the adjective. And this is pattern 2. And the pattern 2 is in this way. As plus adjective plus as plus noun. Fine. What is a simile? A simile is a figure of speech again like alliteration that compares the characteristics of one object directly with that of another. This is usually done using words like as dash as, like, etc. The main purpose of the simile is comparison. It is to show the similarities. Well, now let us see some of the examples of pattern 1 that is verb plus like plus noun. She skims like a bird. She floats like a laugh. She hangs like a star. She springs like a beam. And the textual examples are these. Take a look at it and also into your textbooks. Let us see the pattern 2. As plus adjective plus as plus noun. She is as soft as a star. She is as light as a pearl on a string. Right? As is used and in the first pattern like is used. And the textual examples, take a look at it. Yes. Now, children, there are many more similes in a different context. 
the similes are given in the different context and here you could see as white as let's go on filling in and let's see how you guess and the answers will be popping up as white as snow as wide as the ocean as light as air as slow as a snail as cold as ice as timid as a lamb as smooth as butter the many more words are left out that you will be doing for your assignment textual exercises for your home assignments on page number 96 98 and 99 please note it to note the page number and you can work out the exercises from them right now let's see few of the comprehension question from the poem which you have listened which you have watched the video how do the palanquin bearers carry the brides note down it is in your text take a pencil and put a tick if you can't make a note of it why has she been compared to a star why do the palanquin bearers sing while carrying the bride what do you think this song is about pick out the rhyming words from the poem some words and lines are repeated in the poem work in pairs and list the words and lines that are repeated why do you think the words are repeated pick out the examples of alliteration from the poem this is the third stanza please tick the third stanza and you can find out the alliteration repeated consonant sounds in every line of the poem let's see here we had already done this exercise the rest of it it is here the struck out ones are already done for you make a note of this in your textbook now complete these lines with similes using your imagination one has been done for you fine yes this is an example when i am happy i am as beautiful as a flower now let me give you one more example when i am sad i am as quiet as a night rest of it you will be doing children keeping these two examples in mind please do the rest of it for your home assignment take the help of your teachers also in our last class in the prose lesson before the match we had learned to write paragraph using the profile the clues from the profile here is the profile of shrimati sarojini naidu please make a note of it so that you can write a paragraph using these clues in the profile yes let's recall what we did in a in our present poetry class we had a pre-learning task poem recitations glossary we knew about the poet comprehensive questions alliteration rhyme scheme simile and home assignments yes children so this was a beautiful poem palanquin bearers where we saw so many things and we learned so many language components from this lesson so thank you all children for being with me let's meet in yet another class stay safe thank you very much